Welcome back. Around 15 young uh, Egyptian people will be selected to present the resolution read out during the model of the United Nations, the MUN, session held as part of the World Youth Forum earlier this month in Sharm el-Sheikh before the United Nations Security Council. Fifteen people will introduce some of the amendments of uh, the MUN resolution, make it stronger in cooperation with the Egyptian Foreign Ministry, and finally present it at the United Nations Security Council. Some of the resolution's ideas might be taken into consideration or they might be showcased at the United Nations Museum in recognition of the key role played by the world's young people. To be speaking more about uh, such an idea, today we have uh, Dr. Amr Sida, the co-lecturer of business and management and uh, member of the presidential leadership program. Dr. Amr, thank you very much for being with us today. Pleasure to be here. And uh, Radwa Hamid, uh, the director of the Security Council at the model of the United Nations from the world. Thank you very much, Radu, for being with Thank us. you for having me. Well, uh, before we start talking about uh, the model itself of the United Nations, which is our main concern, I just would like to remind us that actually uh, the World Youth Forum uh, took place in uh, the resort city of Sharm el-Sheikh, that uh, more than 3,200 youth participated from more than 113 countries. There were so many uh, issues about it. Where there were talks about uh, uh, youth empowerment, solving, resolving issues like terrorism, uh, illegal, illegal immigration, immigration yes. the clashes of civilization and culture, important of culture the United Nations model and so many other things. Now, before I start talking to you about whether the PLP program which you participated in or the United Nations model, now would each of you tell us how did you get to participate in uh, the World Youth Forum? Like, was it where you nominated, was it through an online system? Um, one year ago I was uh, mm -hmm. aware of the Presidential Leadership Program mm -hmm. under the auspices of His Excellency President Abdel Fattah Sisi. Mm -hmm. Um, I just applied. I thought, why not? I like participation, so let's try to be an effective member of the society and participate in policy making. We're youth. We didn't have this chance before, so mm -hmm. my parents actually advised me to apply. Mm -hmm. The application process took a few months, and before I know it, I found myself selected in uh, the presidential leadership program. And through the presidential leadership program, I've gotten this chance to become one of the organizers and participants in the World Youth Forum. Yes, what about you, Radwa? For me, I've been a participant of MUN for the past seven or eight years. I've been the Secretary General of Model UN for, uh, the, for the American University in Cairo. I've participated in multiple uh, NM, national Model UNs in New York. So I've been nominated for the position of the Director of the Council. Uh, last September, I was uh, living abroad at the time, and I, when I got the chance, I thought like this is going to be a huge experience for me to come back and to get back to the community and to actually be part of such a huge event. So, yeah, I, this is how I got nominated for the process. Yes, so how did you prepare for it? You have experience in yeah. it for the past seven or eight years. How did you prepare for the Sharm el-Sheikh Conference or the World Youth Forum? So the main idea was coming up with three topics that are essentially important for the current uh, events as well as uh, they are debatable, like that they fa the fact that they need the input of the youth when it comes to these three topics is something that was essential when it came to the selection criteria of the topics. So this is why we selected uh, irregular migration and the very hot topic of refugees, of course. We selected um, terrorism and its impact on the society when it comes to security and peace maintenance, as well as cyber security and the fact that cyber intelligence is something that's becoming of increasingly demanding topic for the society. Dr. Yes. Amr, you told me that uh, you, uh, you've attended several uh, sessions. So which were the sessions appealing and interesting to you? Well, first, the ones, of course, that I participated in as a speaker, which were the oh, yes. Security Council MUN. But if we're talking about other sessions that I've had yes. a chance to attend, uh, it was mainly the one about refugees. Mm -hmm. um, I have, uh, felt uh, very lucky to learn about the problems of refugees and the role of Egypt, um, what Egypt is doing in that regard. Specifically after I learned that we have a lot of refugees here, but we don't call them that. We integrate them into the society. We're the only country that does not have refugee camps. We find here Syrians, Somalians and uh, Sudanese people who are part of the Egyptian society. So that's what I really liked. 
event was attended by several ministers and what was really remarkable at this specific event that how easy it was to talk to very important people in the policy making process in Egypt. I had the chance to talk with ministers before and after the sessions and they are welcome to any uh, criticism even and, and any kind of input from the youth which is something I, found, I find uh, remarkable at this stage of Egypt development. Yes, one of the more important topics that uh, Russia spoke about also is that you can uh, get the chance to be meeting people from all over the world, 3,000 uh, young men and women from all over the yes. world, and uh, specifically Africa. How did you see such an experience? Robert? It was amazing, honestly, because you get the chance to network with so many people, and the fact that everyone is inspiring in the way that they have developed over the past years becomes increasingly amazing. I, we met one of the people who were invited for the entrepreneurial session. He was an Egyptian who was in the thir uh, 30 under 30 list for Forbes. He's running a VC in London. He's uh, supporting deep science research. To get to know the fact that these ca like calibers actually exist within our community is something amazing. But you also get to interact with people who are running companies here in Egypt. They're running companies abroad. There are different experiences and so on. So. Yeah, the networking part was, for me, the most essential part. I got so excited part. when I asked yeah, you. Yeah, I got super excited. <laughs> I can see yeah. Amr wants to talk about What was really remarkable about this idea, Adwa, not just the fact that there are very good calibers coming from all around the world, mm. but the diversity and the fact that we got to live together, mm. Uh, mm. wake up together, have breakfast together, organize things together, talk mm. together. I saw an Ethiopian guy and uh, an Armenian guy fighting over a plate of koshery. Um, <laughs> We sang together, we danced together at the end of the day. After a very long day, we, get, we got to sing together. And we got to really know each other, apart from our religion, apart from our education, apart from our age. I personally learned a lot of things from people who are 10 years younger than me. Uh, so we forgot all about our differences, and we got together in Sharm el Sheikh, doing all these cultural activities on top of what we've done uh, throughout the conference. So Amri, you were telling me that actually um, you had a talk and you did a speech as part of the United Nations Security Council model. So tell me more about your participation and your piece of work. Um, I had a chance to be a part of the delegation of China. So the Security Council in the United Nations has 15 different countries, mm -hmm. five permanent members and 10 non-permanent. I was one of the five permanent members, which, which is uh, the People's Republic of China, as we call it in the Security Council. Um, and they consisted of three people actually. I was one of them and I had a chance to deliver the opening speech in front of uh, the President Abdel Fattah Sisi, His Excellency Sameh Shukri and uh, His Excellency Sheikh Ismail. Um, it was a huge experience. Uh, it was actually over three days so I had a chance to, do, to uh, have a formal speech at the opening speech and later in the Two other days, I had a chance to just debate things, to, without reading from a piece of paper, debate things with uh, Radwa, our director, and with all the other delegations. And the thing is, we do not say our own opinion when we're discussing things with, with regards to uh, combating terrorism. We're presenting strictly the delegation that we are uh, part of, which is the Chinese. So we had to do a lot of research before that. We had to know what is China's stance on specific topics in terrorism, in cybersecurity, in irregular migration, to be able to convey uh, their stance properly in the security Yes, council. what about terrorism? It is the main topic that the world is facing right now, the main threat that the world is facing, specifically Europe, not just Egypt. What are the amendments or the resolution that you came up with at the end of the MUN to be addressing such a problem? So we focused basically on four main pillars. The first thing was uh, data sharing. The main way of communicating and making sure that uh, the message is being transmitted from one country to the other is intelligence sharing and data sharing. So this was a huge portion of uh, the framework that was being suggested. Another way was border control measures. The fact of deploying technology, like the, the ability to be able to use technology and technological advancement in border control measures is one of the things that has been strongly pushed for by the resolution and the amendments. One more pillar was uh, focusing on the funding. The fact that uh, wire transfers, remittances, as, mo as much is as much essential for the funding of terrorist groups as much as the other forms of illegal funds that they are getting. So the, to be able to detect the, the funding techniques and so on is something that was of complete importance for the resolution as well. And finally, because it's very hard to define the term terrorism and it's a very shady thing that the international community has not been able to detect for the past 
20 years, since 2001. There have been a lot of directions on how can we recognize terrorist groups, how can we identify that those people belong to those entities and to be able to combat them directly on an international scale as well as on a regional scale. So those were like the four main directions that yes. the resolution had. Now, Radwa, I'd like to return to you because you mentioned that you were living abroad and, and that's interesting because I understand that there were hundreds of expats, Egyptian expats uh, attending uh, the conference. Now, how uh, did that affect these expats and how can we make use of the Egyptian use abroad for the welfare of Egypt? So, well, the experience was completely amazing. I met a lot of people who, like, they Amsterdam, they live in uh, Switzerland, some of them live in all over Europe mm -hmm. and they were all here for the conference. They were saying about how much they're glad that this is the way we're representing our countries abroad and the fact that we can use the experiences that we've been gathering and accumulating over the past years by, by working or by studying there and so on and having the opportunity to voice uh, how those uh, like how those capabilities can be used in Egypt is something that was a huge opportunity, especially that the, of the fact that we had contact, direct contact with ministers, with investors, with people who are doing an impact in the society. So we, it was a channel of ideas, basically. Uh, Dr. Amr, of course, uh, you have attended uh, a session about the illegal migration and refugees here in Egypt and, of course, in the Middle East. What about the resolutions that you spoke about during the MU and, and the World Youth Forum in general uh, to be targeting such a problem specifically through Egypt and in general through the Middle East and Libya? One of the main uh, ideas that we spent a lot of hours discussing specifically on the second day of the uh, MUN uh, uh, sessions was addressing the root causes of terrorism instead of just focusing on yes we focused on all the things that uh, my colleague here has said but we mainly also focused on eliminating terrorism from the start so focusing on things like education things like uh, reviewing religious discourse which is Egypt is currently doing and now we saw uh, what happened with uh, Grand Imam of Al-Azhar and the recommendations of only certain people to uh, can give fatwa in, on TV and things of that sort so addressing these root causes is very important because yes we can kill one terrorist but we're creating three yes. we can put a hundred in jail but we 150 are being radicalized so if we address the root causes of terrorism in terms of socio-economic factors, education, religious discourse from a young age, I think we spent a lot of time, uh, specifically chi the Chinese delegation, advocating for addressing the root causes rather than the symptoms of terrorism. So let's not wait until terrorists become radicalized and then deal with it. No, we need to prevent the radicalization. We need to debrand the idea of uh, terrorism. Yes. Well, um, actually, the president, President Abdel Fattah Sisi, said that actually the resolutions of uh, uh, the uh, MUN model will be taken to the real Security Council to be given. So, how do you feel that these are the resolutions you've come up with, uh, with such a statement from the president? It's a bit scary, <laughs> and it's a lot. It's a huge responsibility. So, like, we have to review every single thing and make sure it's up to the bar. And like, and the fact that, like, we can, we get to voice our opinions and we get to be innovative about it, and we get to say suggestions that might be like might seem illogical at first, but they might work eventually. It's something that's both interesting and scary. So, yeah. We're totally surprised by it. We <laughs> yeah. had no idea that it would reach that far. We just thought we're simulating the Security Council, we're simulating the United Nations experience. But we found that the closing session, that we didn't even know that anyone was going to attend, but the president attended it, and afterwards he mentioned that we're going to take this uh, resolution and uh, work on it to present Would it to you the have United done Nations. it differently if you knew? I don't think so. We spent a lot of time, yeah. even at, at night at the hotel, got back debating and discussing things together. I think that's the maximum we could have put yeah. with this, because we're very serious about it. Uh, most of us had MUN experience, or those who did not have MUN experience had experience in policy making and international relations. And a funny thing is that I was just in the United States in the actual Security Council one week before the Security Council simulation. simulation. And it was so interesting to see the actual Security Council, how it works, and then simulating it only with young people. That was a remarkable experience.
Yes, uh, Dr. Amr uh, Sayyidah, the co-lecturer of business and management and the member of the presidential leadership program. Thank you very much for being with us Thank today. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. And uh, Radwa Hamid, the director of Security Council at the model of the United Nations for the World Youth Forum. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you so much. Well, um uh, we'd like to thank you very much and now it's time to look at uh, our report about uh, the ongoing events at the Cairo International Film Festival which was inaugurated on the 21st of this month.